Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapts Looks, and today I've got a really interesting macro subject for you. We're going to be melting sweets and candy and sugar in water. It can create some really interesting effects as that uh, sugar starts to melt off and flow away from the sweets that you've placed in your water. I've been trying for the past couple of days to figure out the best method or the simplest method to show you guys to achieve these kinds of shots. I've been trying all sorts of things from doing it in shallow dishes and on plates with various different textures and uh, with various levels of success. Um, I've been trying different things like petri dishes and just half submerging some of my sweets to see what happens there. Um, but ultimately, I decided that the best way was to go and buy a fish tank. The main advantage of having a cheap fish tank like this is to have these flat sides. You can press your camera up against the very edge here or move it back and uh, position your lighting so that there's no reflections and you're not going to get any distortion from the glass like you would if it were a rounded surface. Uh, we do also have the advantage of the depth. We can add a lot more water in here um, and position our sweets and our containers inside here uh, with a lot of variety in terms of depth and movement from the side of the glass. The glass is your main problem here. Any surface or container that you're shooting through is going to affect your image as if it were the front of your lens. If it's got scratches on it, if it's got uh, water drops or dried water or anything on that glass surface, it's going to show up in your images, it's going to distort things and really cause you a problem. I found that using this cheap fish tank, it was about £20 on Amazon, uh, clears a lot of that problem up, so I do recommend getting something like this, even if it's more like a square vase. It doesn't need to be huge, in fact the bigger it is, the more water that you have to fill it up with, and the more hassle it is to change that water after every single sweet. Here's a probably unsurprising fact. A lot of you guys watching our channel are from the US. The only reason that I mention that is because the differences between US and UK sweets and candy uh, can be quite significant. The way that they're made and the types of um, sugary coatings that they put on them um, can vary. And all of the different types of candy that you might want to use uh, react in very unsurprising ways. The ones that quite often you might think will dissolve in interesting ways don't, and the ones that you think wouldn't be that interesting are the most interesting. I do have quite the variety here of both UK, uh, US and international sweets, uh, starting with Skittles. Um, I found that the red ones uh, melt really well for the Skittles. Probably a UK delicacy here, I'm not sure if you get them anywhere else, but uh, bonbons, strawberry bonbons, um, have a very um, sugary, almost uh, dusty coating on them, which might be really interesting. Um, I've got some uh, nerds. The, the, I think these are really sour, um, but there's a pink one in here which is probably the most interesting sweet that I've found. It dissolves with a huge amount of color and it's actually quite opaque. Um, I also have some uh, Mike and Ikes, which again, another American candy. Um, these are quite interesting, but the stuff that comes off them, the sugar is quite transparent and it takes quite a lot of um, lighting and backgrounds to get it to show up properly. And lastly, I do have some M&Ms as well, um, which have uh, a great variety of different effects depending on the different types. So if they've got a peanut in them, it seems like they coat them in a slightly different way. Um, and uh, they can be very interesting. The blue ones um, do quite cool stuff as well, um, but mostly those peanuts, which I think in these bags are yellow. I will straight away recommend that from the outset you get uh, the biggest variety of candies and sweets, the different types, varieties, colors, uh, get as many as you can because you never really know what is going to work best for you, uh, what is going to create interesting patterns on certain different uh, surfaces and textures with different amounts of water, with different temperatures of water. Just get a whole lot so that you can try them all out one by one. When it comes to our setup, there's a few different ways that we can position our camera and our lighting. 
One thing that is consistent though is that you're going to need both to be stable on a tripod. We're shooting time lapses today. That means that any little movement, vibrations, even uh, on my unstable floor, me walking away from my setup, will cause enough vibrations to ruin your shot. So you want to make sure that everything is as stable as possible, as, as little movement as possible, and there's no uh, trucks roaring past your house or anything like that. Get everything nice and steady before you try taking your time lapse. Once your sweep goes into your water, you want to set your camera going and you don't want to disturb it because if you ruin your shot with your sweep dissolving, you're going to need to take your sweep out change your water and potentially set everything back up again. It's very time consuming if uh, something ruins a particular shot. Don't let that put you off experimenting though. Try starting off with quite a little amount of water. There's not a lot of water in here. It'll be quite easy for me to change it out. Uh, once you're a little bit more confident about which sweeps do what and uh, how your shots are coming out, then you can start uh, increasing the amount of water, uh, increasing the depth and changing a few other factors to uh, really see what um, effects you can get out of this type of shoot. So once we've got uh, our camera on a tripod and my lighting up here on a tripod, we can think about the angles. You can shoot down from the top to get uh, the colors spreading out from the uh, the suite itself. You can shoot in from the side to get almost a cascade of sugar caught falling down off um, either the suite or the container that you've got it sat on. When it comes to the lighting, I've got the Adapt Look Studio actually sat on a full size tripod here. Usually I'd have it on a mini tripod and that's still an option, but just to get over the edge of my fish tank, I've got it on a big tripod and I'm going to bring the arms down in all sorts of different directions. You can light this from behind, from below, from uh, the back, from the front, um, but I would recommend trying to get your lighting arms past the glass that you're shooting through. Uh, if you're shooting uh, with your light coming in from the same direction as your camera, you're going to get a lot of reflections, so we need to try and eliminate that. One of the questions that we get asked quite a lot when it comes to our lighting arms is whether or not they're waterproof, and unfortunately, they're not. But I do have a little trick for you. If you want to submerge the ends of your lighting arms, try using a little sandwich bag. These little resealing ones are pretty good. You can place your lighting arm into a waterproof bag and seal it around the edge. And then you can dip the edge of your lighting arm into your water and light it from seemingly inside the, uh, the water itself. It can be a really interesting effect to try out, but if you can't do that for any reason, um, or just don't want to risk getting your light lighting arms wet, you can absolutely light this from behind or from um, above the surface. Playing around with your lighting, again, is going to be one of those things that um, costs you a lot of time with your water, and every time that you change your lighting, uh, it's going to change your shot. So you don't want to be messing with your lighting once it's set. Try and compose it with um, some sort of small pebble or small item so that you can uh, get your shot in focus and get everything looking right without something dissolving into your water. Once you are ready to go, it's time to place one of your sweets into your water. Now to help you a little bit with getting your suite in the exact position that you want it to be, I do recommend using some sort of tweezers or grabbers just so that you can reach down into the water and place the suite exactly where you want it. If you try and drop it from uh, the top of the surface down, it's going to move around and settle wherever it wants to rather than wherever you have already focused. I'm going to just uh, place this one into my um, water exactly where I have my focus set, and even then, it still decides to move around a little bit. So you can see there, as soon as I placed my pink nerd down onto the bottom of my uh, fish tank, all of that um, sugar started falling off, melting away. It's a, a very messy subject, so make sure that you're well prepared for all of that happening as soon as you place your uh, sweet into the water. It will start happening almost immediately, and you want to be able to capture that on your time lapse wherever possible. As soon as the water settles, you can hit go on your camera, and the magic will start to happen um, behind the scenes. Watching it with your naked eye, it's quite uneventful. Everything's happening very slowly, and uh, you might think, Ooh, this is, uh, it's not going to turn out very well, this isn't doing what I expected it to do, but 
just leave your camera going. You've already contaminated your water, you're going to have to change it anyway. Leave it going for a good few minutes at the very least and you might be surprised when you speed up your footage later on um, at what you find. I have several times thought, uh, oh this looks finished, I'm going to take out my suite and turn off my camera and change my water. And then after I've sped it up, I found myself wishing that there was another few minutes or another few seconds of my time lapse uh, for me to watch as things start to settle and spread out even more. So make sure not to be tempted to cut off your time lapse any earlier than is absolutely necessary. That does add a little bit of time to the uh, creation process of these types of shots, but it is worth it. This is the point where you do have to be aware of the vibrations and the shaking that you're making. Just me moving my arms around and sat sitting here talking to you while this time lapse has been going off has probably ruined it. Uh, any little vibrations and shakes during that time lapse will be very, very apparent when you start to speed up your footage. You can stabilize it afterwards, um, but it's much better to try and not to knock anything whilst your time lapse is going and try to just keep everything as steady as possible. Even walking past a little bit too heavy footed could uh, mean uh, the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful time lapse. Now, some of you are probably already thinking, uh, maybe even writing it in the comments, this doesn't seem that complicated. I mean, put water in fish tank, put sweet in water, take picture. Um, but it is a lot more finickety than it, uh, it seems from what you've just seen. Getting all of this right in the first go and then leaving it for um, a certain amount of time for your time lapse and coming back to realize that your camera was in a slightly uh, odd position or that there was a smudge on the glass or that your lighting was in the slightly the wrong place. It's not a very um, time efficient way to capture images or capture video. Um, you might find yourself being quite disappointed uh, after speeding up your footage only to find that um, you're, you walked past or one of your cats walked past and everything got a little bit too wobbly and now your footage is unusable. However, it is worth it when you capture that really interesting sped up shot of this stuff dissolving. I do recommend that you give it a try and uh, experiment with your own suites, your own setups. Please make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. It's been pretty experimental for me, trying new things, learning new things, and I think that's what photography and videography is all about uh, at the end of the day, when you're coming out of a shoot and even if your shots aren't what you expected them to be at the beginning, you will have still learnt something along the way, even if the thing that you learnt is that you don't want to try this type of photography again. If you do have experience doing this type of shoot, make sure to let us know down in the comments if you have any suggestions or tips uh, to make our lives easier next time. Um, I will be trying this again uh, despite my frustrations and I'm sure the people in the comments will also benefit from some extra knowledge. That's all that I've got time for for now though guys, so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.